Abandoned theme parks are popular settings in games because they're one of the only places where you can put a whole lot of diverse and interesting over-the-top spectacles right next to each other. That's in strong effect in Fallout 4's Nuka World DLC, which is big on sights and surprises but light on meaningful decisions. Each of Nuka World's five attractions feels like its own DLC adventure. They're all visually distinct and dense with interesting things to find, including their own enemy types. From the Galactic Zone Space Mountain style ride and BattleBots homage to the Safari Adventures Island of Dr. Moreau and Tarzan references, they're all great to explore. A few of the inhabitants are brand new, but most are buffed up, creative reskins of existing enemies. And sometimes they're extremely tough, but not insurmountable. I went in at level 30, which is when Nuka World's radio signal summons you, and I often felt outgunned, especially in a few of the boss fights. There's a smattering of new loot, but most of what you'll find in the park is a ton of potent new Nuka-Cola flavors you can craft at a mixing station. That makes picking up regular sodas feel more useful and valuable. And of course, there are a lot of collection quests that drive more than 20 hours of exploration, combat, and looting. As a role-playing game, Nuka World feels much less developed. I wish the concept of being awkwardly shoved into a leadership role and having to balance an uneasy piece between three raider gangs meant more. The biggest decision you'll make, outside of whether to just try and kill them all, is which gang gets to run which area of the park after you've secured it. But even though I gave everything to one faction, only one of the other two had a problem with that. Plus, there's no big philosophical conflict between them to make you want to pick one over the other. They're just three different flavors of violent psychopath. The way I see it, surviving the gauntlet means you've got what it takes. I wasn't all that impressed by the new companion either. Gage is introduced as treacherous by nature, but I wouldn't have known it from all of his boot kissing and apparent lack of agenda. His voice acting and backstory are fine, but the things that are great and memorable about Nuka World are all of its impressive sights and discoveries. With the park conquered, you're sent back out to the Commonwealth to do what a raider does, attack and subjugate settlements. These fights or negotiations are an interesting novelty the first couple of times, and there are a few unique mechanics to running a raider base. Really, it's just nice to have something else to do with these settlements, even if there's not a lot of depth to those systems. For more on all things Fallout, stick with IGN.